Hello! So, if you happen to be new here, taking a look at my videos will make it pretty clear that I love Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. I've sunk countless hours into not just making videos for it, but playing the game for years beforehand simply due to how much I enjoyed it. I know it can be a little weird and quirky at times, but I fell in love with how liberating the game felt, and the sheer soul of the story it told. And when I made my first guide for the game a couple years back, I did so with the intent of helping out new and veteran players alike. And it makes me extremely proud to say that I think I was successful in that. But after so long of enjoying the game, I was ready to move on to the sequel once it was announced, and very excited about doing so. I've since covered the pre-release showcases, streamed the game, and made a couple of guides, but I've never actually sat down and discussed my thoughts on the game now that it's here. So I thought I'd take the chance to do so in this video. I'll cut to the chase and address two big elephants in the room. It's a small room, there's not much space. First off, I think it's fair to say Dragon's Dogma 2 has been divisive for several reasons, most of which are valid. I think that new players have the best chance of enjoying themselves here because they have yet to experience some of the cool dogma stuff us returning players are used to, getting launch boarded at Griffins and stuff like that. This is especially true for players who obsess over exploring, because while I wouldn't say that it's particularly rewarding, I'd say exploring does better prepare you for enjoying the game as a whole. The other thing I need to address is my own opinion on the game. So here goes. I do not enjoy playing Dragon's Dogma 2. This is very painful for me to admit. Plenty of you are fully aware how supportive I was of this game. The whole reason my fists only run even began was to campaign for a sequel happening. Like, yeah, it was played for laughs because I had zero actual influence and I was fully aware of that, but there was a genuine sincerity there in my desire to see a sequel. But I find myself not only disappointed, but sort of baffled that I am disappointed. Because, on the surface, this is far from the worst game in the world. But the more you play, the cracks start to reveal themselves until they reach a point that they're glaringly apparent. After the incredible success of DMC5, which is, in my opinion, a perfect game, I find it difficult to believe that this is what it's an always cooking. And I certainly don't buy that this is his vision for what Dragon's Dogma was always supposed to be, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to explain as best I can why I feel the way I do. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen always stood out to me for respecting the player's investment in it. Unlike games that scaled enemies with the player as they leveled up, uh, Dark Arisen instead lets you become incredibly powerful with enough time and effort, and in order to avoid things becoming a boring cakewalk, introduced a bit of Black Isle as a big challenging dungeon crawl. The snappy combat packed with efficient, responsive skills meant you were capable of some crazy stuff and given the means to feel truly empowered. It's practically built for players to enjoy a proper hero fantasy. Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't respect the player at all. <laughs> Full stop. This game fucking hates you, in fact. It doesn't remotely respect your time because it's obsessed with wasting it, and it doesn't give a damn about how much effort you apply because it banks far too hard on you just knowing things you can't always reasonably be expected to know, and often won't. To provide some examples, let's look at Dragon's Plague. For anyone who doesn't know, Dragon's Plague is effectively a hidden mechanic in the game. It does give a warning once you recruit a pawn afflicted with it, but the actual context is left vague and it can be quite easy to forget this when you're hours into a session of playtime. Should you make the mistake of then resting at an inn, said pawn will go batshit and slaughter every single NPC in that town. On paper, this is a really unique and interesting idea and to some degree, I can commend them having the balls to actually put it in the game, but it's kind of a mean mechanic because it's ultimately built on the idea of fucking the player over. I never fell afoul of this myself, which is probably for the best because I had no idea anything like this existed throughout my entire first playthrough, and I feel like if the game had punished me for something I simply wasn't aware of by wiping out an entire town with no immediate solution, I might have stopped playing then and there. This is sort of the crux of this game's design. So much of it is just there to make things inconvenient for the player. Here's how travel typically goes in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Pop a fairy stone and boom, you're at a port crystal of your choosing. Port crystals are naturally acquired simply by playing the game, but you can acquire even more with a bit of exploration or subsequent playthroughs, so you can quite easily leave one on a relatively frequent basis to dot teleport points all over the map. 
It really doesn't take much for travel to become minimal in this game, and even before we had the Eternal Fairy Stone, Fairy Stones in general were pretty common. In Dragon's Dogma 2, you pop a Fairy Stone, wait, those things are scarce as fuck, now you're gonna have to go drop a bunch of gold just to get one, okay, we got a Fairy Stone, now let's head to a Port Crystal, wait, they are also scarce as fuck, and with a bigger and emptier world map, that means there are a lot of places you're gonna need to head that simply aren't covered by a Port Crystal. This remains the case on subsequent places playthroughs because it resets your port crystal placement even on New Game Plus. So, now the fastest option available to us is the Oxcart. For reference, Skyrim is a game that came out a year prior to this game's predecessor, and it still manages to handle this better. There, you approach the cart guy, pick a destination, and you're there. Here, you do the same, but most of the time, rather than having a smooth journey, you'll find yourself under attack halfway to your destination. This alone isn't such a problem, even if it is kind of an annoyingly frequent occurrence, because once the fight is over, you can hop back on the cart and finish fast traveling. But, if you find yourself in an especially fucked up situation, such as two ogres charging towards you at once, you can easily have no say whatsoever in them literally breaking apart the ox cart entirely, which leaves you completely bollocked. Okay, so now we literally have no choice but to cover the rest of the distance on foot, but roughly 80% of that travel time is going to be spent in combat, and because of the loss gauge, you will at some point need to camp in order to survive. Camping points are ironically almost always guarded by packs of enemies, so you gotta clear those out and then... Hey buddy, did you bring a camping kit? These are fairly common, so chances are you did, but they're also very heavy, so it's only really feasible to bring along one or two at a time, and if you've used those up, then God fucking help you. Don't forget that if you save your game at 50% max health, then die after having it lowered to 20%, it will still be 20% when you reload your save. Now you're in a borderline softlock situation. So my question is, how is any of this supposed to be fun. You've taken an aspect as simple as travel and made it as miserable as possible. And the sad fact is, this applies to so many other areas of the game. I hope you like getting stun locked in combat because that counts for a very large majority of it when you aren't breezing your way through something with zero effort. The balance of this game swings like a pendulum. Enemy placement and overtuning in Batal especially is a fucking travesty. And I genuinely think certain enemies, dragons especially, are designed extremely poorly in terms of conveying what they're doing. Conveyance in general is borderline non-existent in this game and that counts for one of its major issues. There are so many points at which you ask yourself, well how the fuck was I supposed to know that? One golden example was when I took the rope uh, elevator thing in Batal for the first time, only to have a griffin roll up halfway across and fucking dive bomb me, leaving me unable to do anything about it as the platform collapsed and my party collectively fell to their deaths. It was actually kind of funny though, I'll give it that. It's like the game took one glance at Dark Souls, so one of those moments where the game decides to be a, a bit of a goblin and throw a comically huge boulder or something at the player and immediately said that, that's what I want to be, without paying attention to the pieces around it. There's a lot of speculation around why or how this happened, but at the end of the day, none of it really matters because the fact is, this is what we got. After over a decade of waiting, and to be completely frank, it's not good enough. <laughs> It falls so short of the mark its predecessor already made back in 2012. The combat of the original game is what I'd describe as Devil May Cry light. Naturally, things were scaled back by comparison, but everything feels snappy. There's an instant, impactful feedback to your attacks. It had that dog in it, you know? Put the dog in the dogma. The Arisen is framed as a hero of their own making, with an inherent aptitude for combat largely driven by sheer force of will. You might not be juggling foes with bullets, but the game does place an emphasis on you being a cool protagonist, effective in whatever field you choose. So long as you have the stamina to do it, you can probably go do the awesome thing you want to do. In Dragon's Dogma 2, combat is in a lot of ways scaled back. It's slower, clunkier, not inherently bad things on their own, but this does nothing to elevate the combat itself. I don't feel more immersed because my swings are slow, I just feel less powerful, and that 
is kind of the name of the game here. Your Arisen moves in a very aimless way, a steep incline is your worst enemy in this game, and while the new physics can result in some funny visuals, battles are very beholden to those physics, and this only clips the wings of combat further. Sometimes you just lose control of your character entirely for a lengthy stretch in service of some ragdoll animation, or to stumble endlessly because you dared to move remotely close to the edge of an elevated area. I'm also not going to act like the original game wasn't potentially rough to look at, but frankly, I'd rather be looking at 2010 graphics than the dull grey blob that is the sequel. As for the story, um, it's not good. A sentiment I keep seeing is, this game has the same problems as the first game, but I don't like that because I feel it massively undersells the values of the original game. I describe the story of the original game as simple but effective. Despite the troubled development of the game, it didn't feel unrealized. It felt like a story that achieved what it aimed for. It did a good job of setting up cool ideas and delivering on them with a uniquely subversive take on the classic fantasy tale of a hero out to slay a dragon. Whereas I would describe the story of Dragon's Dogma 2 as barely there and largely ineffective. It's effectively a worse retread of things we've seen before, and most of the unique elements it introduces aren't properly expanded upon or given much screen time at all. And I often found myself questioning why they felt the need to so haphazardly mimic the first game's story, when something entirely different would have been at least a bit more exciting. But what's especially disappointing is that I can still see worth in Dragon's Dogma 2. Glimpses of exciting moments, interesting lore elements, and fascinating details in the world. But none of this is ever properly capitalized on. Especially in regards to the gameplay, it feels like the game is constantly kneecapping itself. Now, at this point, even even if they released some amazing, vast DLC for Dragon's Dogma 2, it wouldn't matter, because the foundations of the game are too weak to support it. Dragon's Dogma 1 was, in my opinion at least, simply a slightly unfinished masterpiece. The very design of the game felt like it had so much love poured into it. The sequel is a hollow, confused mess, and the design of it feels cynical by comparison. It's tragically ironic, but as far as I'm concerned, Dragon's Dogma lost its heart. All of this is to say that, as of right now, while I'm not necessarily gonna write things off completely, I currently have no further plans to make content for this game, which unfortunately means I don't plan to continue with my vocation guides, and there are several reasons for that beyond the process being distinctly difficult and dull for me. It's important to point out that the guide series I made for the original game exists for two specific reasons. The first is that I realised there wasn't really content like that out there for the game at that time. I wanted to fill the niche and potentially help people out. And over time, it became more and more clear to me that I was basically the only source of this kind of content. At least in regards to, like, a full series, I think? It felt extremely validating and rewarding to be actively providing content that the community found useful. And I still can't thank you all enough for the support you've shown me for so long. But now, with Dragon's Dogma 2, when the game released, it had a lot of eyes on it, and thus it launched with a lot more in the way of specialised guides and stuff like that. So, at that point, I was no longer filling a niche. Uh, I could still make the guides, but ultimately they weren't actually going to be a necessary resource, if that makes sense. The other reason I chose to make those guides for the first game is due to my own extensive experience with it. I had countless hours across vanilla Dragon's Dogma and Dark Arisen. My playthroughs are actually probably in the hundreds by now, so yeah, I felt fairly confident in my own knowledge of the game, and being able to draw from that for the guide series made the process of creating each guide a lot easier. While there is some amount of transferable knowledge you can take into Dragon's Dogma 2, it is quite vastly different, which means I have by no means mastered it, and I'm nowhere near as confident in my own knowledge here. This doesn't always have the biggest impact on the guides, but it means that little details that can potentially make an important difference just aren't there, so I feel like I'm not helping as much as I could be. Now, I want to apologize if this video feels a bit defeatist. I only ever really want my content to be uplifting, but in this case, I really felt the need to be fully transparent. Ultimately, this isn't the end of the world. Life goes on, and this kind of thing happens with plenty of games, especially with the industry how it is today. It's just very unfortunate that it had to happen to this one. Understandably, some of you might be wondering what I plan to do next, what kind of content I'll aim for, and so on. 
And don't you worry, your boy's still in this. Whatever comes next, I can tell you it's gonna be different. But if you're okay with that, I'd be overjoyed to see you all there. Stay tuned, Thief of Crystals will return soon enough. Love you all.